Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. I am your host, Joe Kuzma, and as always, our show is brought to you in part by our official partner, StubHub, where, well, let's just face it, folks, do you want to deal with ticket scalpers or not knowing if something's counterfeit at all? 100% guaranteed tickets over at StubHub. Find out more at steelcityunderground.com slash tickets. Today, I have a very special guest on this episode. He's certainly going to be talked about quite a bit with training camp rolling around just about two weeks away. I would like to welcome at this time 2016 seventh round draft pick wide receiver DeMarcus Ayers. DeMarcus, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? You know, as I said earlier, um, to coin a phrase from someone else, I'm better than I deserve. So I'll take it as that. And I guess we'll start by asking, how's everything going for you this off season? Uh, it's, everything is going pretty good so far. Um, just back home in Dallas, Texas, um, and kind of back and forth from my college in Houston, Texas. Uh, just training um, with former teammates and players that are now draftees um, this past off season. So it's it's been a pretty fun um, off season so far. Just getting after the grind and. Um, feeling myself uh, grow every single day. Any of those guys you care to acknowledge or name? Uh, maybe we know who they are. Uh, yes, I I put in a lot of work with my um, my college quarterback Greg Ward, who's making a transition from quarterback to receiver. Um, phenomenal athlete, uh, really good guy. That's just willing to um, put in a lot of work. Um, I, I I mention him the most just because um, you know. Him being a quarterback, uh, making that transition is not easy, but just his passion for the game, his willingness to get better each and every day. And uh, I can remember all those times when I was at Houston with him and he would do all the skill position drills and I'd never go with the quarterbacks. And it's just made him a tremendous player and tremendous athlete. So um, I love working with him. I love training with him. Um, I trained with Marcus Murphy, who's uh, who's running back for the uh, New Orleans Saints. Uh, Devontae Harris, who's a cornerback for the Saints. DeAndre Elliott, who's a, who's a cornerback for the Seattle Seahawks. Um, William Jackson, who's a Cincinnati Bengals first-round pick, who's one of my college teammates. Um, so it's, it's been cool to see all those guys this past offseason. Um, and we text here from time to time to see check on each other and see how we're doing. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, note about William Jackson, too, because a lot of people forget, oh, he plays for the Bengals. That's like the enemy. And it's like, you know, Mm -hmm. football's family. I mean, you guys went to college and a lot of you, um, you know, different runs of life there and maybe end up on different teams and stuff like that. But how's uh, William Jackson doing, by the way? Because I know he had to sit out all of last season. Uh, he's doing awesome. You know, um, William's my guy. You know, we came in together in Houston and um, I tell him all the time, man, you helped my game grow in so many ways um, in just terms of going against one of the best corners, if not the best corner in the draft, in my opinion, um, every single day. And so when I got the game days, he made it a lot easier uh, for me. It made it a lot easier for me to go out there and compete against other guys around the country. Um, but he's he's doing a phenomenal job. He's been in high spirits the whole year. We text every week last year uh, when I got hurt in camp, and then he got hurt in camp. So we kept communication throughout the year, and even now, we you know we both always chat um, just about every week and and just see how we're doing. Um, and I'm excited to see him play, and I'm also excited to play against him. Yeah, that'll be an interesting matchup should that happen. That, that's got to be fun. Maybe you'll do the whole trading jerseys thing afterward too if you didn't have a oh, chance no. last year. No doubt. So, yeah, it's interesting you mentioned Greg Ward because we had jokingly said something before the draft that if he ended up with the Steelers, he'd be the second guy to play quarterback in college and end up in Pittsburgh as a wide receiver, of course, Heinz Ward being the first, but it didn't necessarily Mm -hmm. work out that way. But uh, Greg Ward being a kind of Swiss Army knife, too, that's kind of how your career went. Do You kind of do it all type guy started out as a running back, correct? Uh yeah, I um I played quarterback um in high school and then transitioned to receiver 
Um, played a little running back here and there in college. Um, um, just any possible way I could get the ball in my hands. Uh, Coach Herman and his staff did a really good job at um, at uh, giving giving me the opportunity to make plays. And same thing with Greg. Uh, I, I don't I don't think the transition to be that much uh, hard for him just because I know what kind of work ethic he has, what kind of character he uh, he brings uh, every single day. Um, to the to the to the uh, practice field, um, on and off the field, and he's he's just an unbelievable athlete. You know, every time he touches the ball, you gotta hold your breath. So, I think Philly got a good one. I think they got a sleeper, and, and if he gets his opportunity to make that roster, I, I know he'll do well. Now, growing up in Texas and mentioning you're back home in Dallas, which, by the way, I have family that live in Plano and Frisco, too, so very familiar with the area. But everything there is America's team. It really is Jerry's world, as in the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones. Did you happen to grow up as a Dallas Cowboys fan? Oh, you know what? I get that I get that question all the time, and it's, <laughs> it's, and it's, it's kind of crazy because I, I, I've never been a Cowboys fan. Um, my my family are really big Cowboys fans, like my mom, my dad, um, my immediate family, and as in my coaches, uh, pretty much my high school coaches, all of them, a lot of my friends. Um, but I've always been a supporter of the, of the, of the of Cowboys because they're the home team. Um, I just, it's just always it has been exciting to watch players like Aikman, Emmitt Smith, Irvin, Dion. Um, I mean, the list just goes on and on. Um, it's, it's, it's been cool to kind of experience being around them and meet them um, and seeing those seeing those guys win a lot of games and win championships. Um, it, it's, it has brought Dallas together tremendously. Um, so I've never been a fan, but it's been cool to see them do well. Yeah, it's another one of those things where I, I, I know I'm, I'm just a little bit older than you, but I'm not old enough to recall all these 1970s Steelers battles, like the Super Bowls against the Cowboys and that. So maybe my dislike of the Cowboys doesn't run as deep as it may for some Pittsburgh fans. But I could, I totally respect that. I, I remember watching them also growing up and you know beating on the Buffalo Bills in the Super Bowl and et cetera, et cetera. You can't help but respect as many of those Hall of Fame players that came from those teams during that era but I have to say the Steelers too just have a long list of Hall of Famers uh, I imagine just what was it like like walking into fa- the Steelers facilities for the first time seeing all those Lombardi trophies and the like uh, it's just overwhelming you know you uh, me personally I've never been that close to a um, NFL championship trophy um, I've seen Heisman trophies. I've seen national championship trophies, um, state championship trophies, and um, and and every every time I think I've seen the best one, I, I, I and I see the the, the highest level, um, and it, it's just different. It's a different feel every single time, and just to walk across and see six of them, it's just like wow, man! Like how 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 did this happen? You know. What kind of players did they have? What kind of work ethic did these guys have? Um, this organization, um, this town, just is so supportive. Um, it's a lot of a lot of emotions that goes on uh, that goes to your head when you try what it takes to just get one. Um, but for them to have six of them, you know that's that's not easy. Um, it's, it's always have a saying of saying it's it's hard to get there and it's even hard to win it. Um, so for them to get in that moment and um, six of them, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, we hear the cliche quite a bit, and for those of us who have been fortunate enough to hang around the Steelers locker room, you have a slogan that's right outside that says the standard is the standard. Is that something that's ingrained by the coaching staff and the organization all the time in all of the players there? Yeah, no doubt. Um, that's one of Coach Tomlin um, biggest, you know, biggest quotes. You know, the standard, the standard is not going to change for anyone or anybody, and um, we. We really, we really embrace it. You know, uh, I can remember when I, ever since I've gotten there, the only thing we've ever talked about, the main goal is to win a world championship, you know. And this is from the start, from when OTAs, when the rookies get their OTAs start from rookie mini camp to OTAs, the mini camp, the training camp. It's championship, championship. That's all we preach. And it's, it's never, can we get there? Can we get there? Will we get there? It's always been the main goal every single day. And it's a reminder that we're trying to be world champions. We're not satisfied satisfied with just winning one game or winning a couple games or winning the division, uh, making it to the AFC Championship. We want more. And I think um, in terms of 
the the attendance that we had um, as a team as a whole this off season in terms of everyone pretty much being there throughout every OTA every mini camp um, showed that the guys were hungry and we're not satisfied with just making it to the AFC Championship this past year. We want we want the main thing. I think that's everyone's goal, uh, unless you're a fan of like the Cleveland Browns, where I hear um, I happen to live halfway between Pittsburgh and Cleveland. So even my mm-hmm. wife is a Cleveland Browns fan, and you know what? They just want to win like six games this year. So definitely mm-hmm. a, a higher standard placed upon Pittsburgh Steelers players and yourself. Coming in as a late-round draft pick in the seventh round last year, it took quite some time for you to catch on and actually make it and get promoted to the active roster, which happened about mid-December. But you saw your first major playing time on Christmas Day. Was that like a Christmas wish come true, a big gift for you? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I was I, Like I told a lot of my family members and friends, that was probably the best Christmas I ever had. Um, it's just, you know, going through what I went through to actually have the opportunity to just be in that moment. And I had so much fun that I even forgot it was Christmas. Um, just being out there and just the emotions, the adrenaline pumping, my first game in the NFL, and it just happened to be on that day. And then just the the situation that it, that that we were brought up on, having to win that game, to even clinch the playoffs, and um, just wasn't rattled. You know, I felt like I belonged out there, and you know, I was excited to have an impact on the game to be able to put my team uh, teammates and and team in a in position to win the game and clinch playoffs. Yeah, and you know what? You had uh, a very big play that drew a pass interference call. We're actually used to seeing your opposition or the rival Baltimore Ravens do that a lot to us with Joe Flacco. Uh, did you know your number was going to be called throughout that day? Were there certain plays? Was there like a, a maybe a situation there where they said, okay, we're looking for you, DeMarcus, to do this, and that led to maybe that pass interference call? Uh yeah, uh, I could just remember chatting with Ben before the game, and he told me just relax and play football. And even the night before the game, you know, he told me get some rest. It's gonna be a big day tomorrow. And you know, this is my first time even you know, really probably being talked to by Big Ben the night before the game. Um, uh, so when you know when he told me that, I knew it was I knew it was pretty much on. Um, Ben is a guy that really don't say a lot. Um, he coaches and you know tell guys where to be, how he wants things done. But if he specifically comes to you and tell you this is how he want it done, you want it, you know, you want it to be done the right way. So when he told me that, man, I was I was excited. I went in my room and got went, got some, the best rest I've probably gotten all season. And um like I say the next day I can remember, you know, everyone just excited for me, excited for um excited to just watch me go out and compete and it made it a lot easier for for me um, and took a lot of pressure off me to know that those guys believed in me and I hadn't played all year long. And then just doing everything that I could possibly do up to that point, I had no missed assignments. Um, I had, you know, made some great blocks for Le'Veon and um, just did my job up until that point. And when the time came for me to make a play or have an opportunity to make a splash for the team, um, Ben trusted me. And I, um, I couldn't thank him enough for just making that day um, real easy for me and relaxing by believing in me. Yeah, and speaking of making the splash, you had a reception for nine yards on that game-winning drive. I think Ben went, uh, he completed like eight passes on that final drive that mm-hmm. ended with the, quote, immaculate extension by Antonio Brown, who's someone mm-hmm. that uh, you got to replace, actually, the a, a week later because some of the usual guys that would be playing in the game decided – to have some rest for the final regular season mm-hmm. game against the Cleveland Browns. And, and you had a nice game there, too. Five receptions, 44 yards, and uh, your first ever NFL touchdown. What was that like? Uh, it was it was a great feeling, you know, um, a, a good experience just to be out uh, be out there and take so many reps. Um, just kind of testing and see where I am on the food chain, you know. After coming off a huge win, I was, you know, my confidence was skyrocket. Um and then having the ability to go and play a position that I hadn't played all season long and just helped me develop and grow in the offense. Um, and I, I think it helped um, Coach Tomlin and Ben and the OC, Coach Haley, um, realize that, okay, this guy can this guy can really play. Um, so it was a lot of emotions. My mom, first uh, NFL game, I was able to score. 
scored my first touchdown, um, um, bringing in the new year. So it, it was a lot of emotions going going throughout the game, but it was just a, I mean, it was a good experience for me, and I'm glad I had the opportunity to go out and get my first start under the circumstances, and um, it created more opportunities for me to stay active throughout the playoffs. Yeah, and I would say, or I should say, maybe you would say, um, maybe uh, you could give a little bit of that credit to your wide receivers coach, Richard Mann, mm-hmm. who, uh, I mean, what do you think of that in terms of, uh, he announced he's, this is going to be his last year, so is that kind mm-hmm. of bittersweet? Is there a lot of credit you give to coach, and um, how do you I, feel I about give, him walking away? I give a lot of credit to coach. I mean, without Coach Mann, um, just – spending so much time with me from the moment I got um in in Pittsburgh and especially in camp when I when things were moving really fast for me. Um I was still trying to learn a playbook. He would make me draw the plays up every single night and bring it to him the next day to meetings. Um whichever install we we were going to practice the next day. Um I had I have a lot of respect for him. Even when I was I got hurt during camp and was on practice squad, you know, he kept me focused on the game plan every single week and just kept telling me all season long that my shot was going to come. And um, he prepared me for each moment that, that I that I was in throughout the season last year. And um, I couldn't thank him enough. And in terms of him walking away, um, it's going to be, it's going to be a little different, you know, because last year he told us it was going to be his last year, but we felt that we were so close that he wanted to come back and give us one more year. And um, it's going to be hard for us to, to say goodbye, but uh, we wouldn't want, Want it in any other any other way to just go out with a championship for him, um, and him experience that and be able to him for him to be able to spend more time with his family and go on and um, enjoy his time off yeah. away from the game. He's been doing such a great job. You had, guys have a packed wide receiver room there in Pittsburgh. Among those players, is there someone that's kind of like a player coach or who's assumed maybe a mentor role with you? Um. I think hey, Darius Hayward Bay do a really good job in terms of um, coaching all the guys. AB is really not a talk. He's kind of a lead by example kind of guy. Um, Tay Martavius has um, he's 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 a good he's a pretty solid communicator as well. But in terms of older cats in the room, I think Hayward Bay does a really good job just helping guys out, helping guys understand the game from a different perspective. From a coaching standpoint, from a player standpoint, um, just being a mentor to 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 all the young guys, and someone that has been in the league for a long time and just kind of found the way to stick around, um, even things that he's not so good at, um, I think is so. This is what I think is so genuine about him: the things that he's not good at, that he sees potential in other guys, and he's able to coach them up and tell them, "Hey, you got the ability to do this." You know, I wish I could do that, and I'm, I will be willing to work with you to, for you to teach me how to do this. And what he's good at, he's willing to rub it off on other people. So I think that was that what makes him um, a leader in our room, and just his willingness to open, have open conversation with guys, and tell them, you know, hey man, I I think you could have did this better. Um, I think you did a really good job here. He's like the you know the coach as a out of the receiver room. Yeah, and you're not the first uh, player to have said that. In fact, to the point where there's rumblings and rumors that should his uh, playing career ever end, maybe he has a future in coaching as well. But uh, Mm -hmm. considering all the advice anyone's ever given you as far as a coach or a player, is there anything that really sticks out as the best advice anyone's ever given you? I just I couldn't say anyone specific because a lot of our guys kind of got the same motto and, um, you know, just – I think the cream just always rise to the top when the work ethic is there. Um, you know, a number of our guys can, you know, can 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 say it and also back it up. Um, I think AB is, does a really good job in just in terms of showing everyone what it takes to be to be one of the elite receivers in the NFL, and just in terms of his work ethic. Um, Marquise Pouncey, uh, Le'Veon. I mean, some of our best players have arguably the best worth ethic, worth ethics on our team. So uh, just being able to watch those guys be professionals every single day, you just sit back and you just kind of observe and you don't really have to say much because they literally are leading by example. And when things that you don't understand, you, you have to ask because they're willing and uh, will will help you do and take your game to the next level if you're willing to put in the work. 
Yeah, speaking of putting in some work, I've seen you doing some of the speed drills, which shared one of the videos you'd posted on Instagram. What do you think you need uh, as a player yourself to improve Mm -hmm. upon uh, this year compared to last year? Or is there something you feel that you've improved on uh, season to season now heading into 2017? Um, I just just, want to improve my play strength. I mean, last year – Last year, a lot of injuries, so I really didn't get to grow um, in terms of physical, physically being ready to play from day one. Um, I think the thing that was keeping me around just is my ability to to beat guys in man coverage and you know making plays and making uh, catching everything. Um, those are those are pretty much my strengths and making plays in space and catching balls and winning man to man coverage consistently. Um, now I think the things that I'm continuing to work and improve on is understanding um, coverage is better, disguising, um, understanding zone a lot better, making really good pre-snap threes, and um, just being on the same page with the quarterback at all times. So uh, my play strength is, is going to help me um, a lot more when I'm able to just have a full off season um, and just in terms of not being injured and, being able to be in a weight room consistently and not have any restrictions. So uh, I think once I'm able to keep getting, keep building that strength in a weight room, I'll be able to play a lot more um, stronger and um, a lot more bigger um, when guys are trying to just do different things in disguise and trying to get hands on you at the last minute and trying to make you make quick decisions. Seen a lot of your teammates had maybe uh, leaned out, put on some more muscle in the off season. Uh, and if you gained any positive weight or maybe dropped a little bit of weight, that's made you a little faster for this season. Uh, now you know what I've actually put on weight. You know, I think last year I came in around like one eighty two, one eighty three, and now I'm sitting like one eighty seven, one eighty eight consistently. Um, and I think it's it's um, it's make it has helped me grow, you know. Um, just in terms of like I say that play strength has been been my biggest thing and biggest motivation this off season, just playing strong and being able to, um, you know, fight through injuries and and not have um, any injuries. And um, I'm, I feel like I'm getting quicker and stronger. Um, a lot bit a lot of fast uh, a lot more fast than I was last year um after coming off the groin surgery so everything is just kind of falling in place for me so a little faster would you say you're the fastest wide receiver on the team or who might be uh no nah, I'm not the fastest <laughs> uh that I leave that up to um um uh, probably Martavius it's not Martavius Sammy and Hayward Bay they all have Crazy wheel, so <laughs> it's not as important when you I'm got that footwork mix. down. Yeah, you're, it sounds yeah. like it, man. I'm <laughs> telling you, you look like the Flash yeah. in that video. I, I was just like, holy yeah. cow, maybe somebody sped this. Up. It's yeah. like one of those apps, like my wife uses with yeah. my little daughter or yeah. something. You know, it makes her run around. Yeah, that's but... that's uh, been a huge emphasis in my off season is getting in and out of breaks quick, quick as possible. Um, at the top of the route, winning at the top of the route of my routes. Um, control speed into my brakes, fast, fast speed out of my brakes. And um, Coach Tommy Har- Coach Thomas Harris, uh, who's who was my high school receiver coach here in Lancaster, Texas, in Dallas, um, he's been spending a lot of time helping me develop my game um, in terms of just getting in and out of brakes consistently, no wasted movement, catching the ball, turning, making a move up the field. Um, he's done a really good job of just prepping me for that. Now, I know it's only been football and shorts so far, but uh, we've heard how you have had a little bit of a rapport there with Ben Roethlisberger, how he had a lot of trust in you. But headed into the preseason, you're going to be working with Landry Jones once again, who you got to play with in Week 17 against Cleveland Browns, and that's where you had a very nice game in your first touchdown. Uh, Have you had a chance to catch any passes yet from Joshua Dobbs, the fourth-round draft pick? And if so, how does he maybe differ from Ben or Landry? Um, Just a little younger. Um, He's still understanding the game. Um, I think he's shown some flashes. Um and got better um pretty much every week he's been there. Um you know, it's just so it's so hard to learn our playbook in just a couple uh in just a couple months, couple weeks. So 
Um, I think the more he's been watching Ben and watching Landry, he's gotten better. Um, and he, I mean, he throws a really good ball. Um, his anticipation is really, um, really nice. You know, in, in terms of as far as a rookie quarterback, sometimes he anticipates a little bit more than than he should. But um, I think he has all the physical tools to eventually um, be a starter. Um, I don't know if it'll be for us or anyone else, but I think he has a um, a bright future um, if he could just put it all together because the physical traits are there for him and he, his strong arm is unbelievable. Um, and then his knowledge of the game, he understands everything, even though everything is moving so fast for him and you know the playbook is really tough for anyone to come in and just learn. Um, I think he understands the game. It just has to slow down a little bit for him and the more reps he get, he'll be fine. Yeah, that is very exciting. I know a lot of Steelers fans are really amped up to see what uh, Joshua Dobbs can do headed into the exhibition games, and hopefully we don't have to see him anytime too soon, and uh, Ben is nice and healthy in there for many years to come. But uh, the elephant in the room that everyone, I think, thinks of when they think of when you were drafted and maybe looking at where you may fit on this roster, I'd mentioned you kind of are a, a do-it-all type guy. And you'd said earlier that any way you could touch the ball, you'll get on the field. Is there any discussion again this year where there's always something every year with the Steelers, even before you arrived with the team last year, of maybe Antonio Brown not fielding punts again this season? Uh, yeah, it's been some discussion just like it was last year. You know, I think in terms of last year, um, it was really me or Eli job to lose. And, um, you know, when I went down with the injury, I didn't had, I had zero chances of winning the job, to be honest with you. Just, um, just being realistic, you know, I, I had no lateral movement in my foot. Um, couldn't plan to put my foot in the ground. So it was tough for me. Um, I was still able to make a couple big returns in the preseason, but, nowhere near what, what I could um, do in terms of my potential. So um, I struggled um, with that a little bit. And then in terms of Eli, I don't really know the situation. Um, I know him and A.B. was kind of splitting reps last year and then beginning part of the season. But this year is my main focus, to be honest with you. You know, I know what I bring to the table as a receiver, and I can only control what I can control in terms of you know how the depth chart plays out and, you know, I'm going to have my share of opportunities to make plays, and I'm going to do what I do there. But um, winning the permanent turn job will mean everything to me because I know my ability. I know I can take it to distance at any time and just all get on the same page with the guys that are blocking for me and just understand what the punter and the um, punt team is trying to do to, you know, counteract what we're trying to do. So once I get on the same page with my guys, I know that I can um, have a really good chance of doing, doing really good at that this year. Yeah, you have a great inspiration to look up to in Antonio Brown, also being a late round draft pick in the sixth round. And that's, you know, he won that job. And in fact, uh, his birthday was just celebrated the other day, and they posted his first touchdown was off a kick return. So, you know, sky's the limit there for sure. It was just something that I had to ask. And, you know, we should elaborate on it was an ankle injury you had, or was it like a foot injury last year? Because Oh, yeah, I tore a ligament in my, uh, in my ankle. And had a high and a low ankle sprain. So, yeah, yeah you're not going to move around a whole lot with that, especially trying to cut <laughs> yeah. on, yeah, on grass or with cleats. So, yeah. um, now that we've had the football in shorts, about two weeks off from training camp, you have, um, what are your plans right now in your downtime between, uh, now and then? Uh, I really don't have a lot of downtime. You know, I'm training like three times a day. Um, in terms of lifting, you know, field work, conditioning. Um, um, I'm going to L.A. tomorrow. Um, supposed to be a vacation, but I don't know how much more. I don't know how much of a vacation it's going to be because I'm literally trying to live, stay right on the beach so I could get me some training in the sand. Oh man, that's um, great. So we'll we'll see how that go, but <laughs> it probably won't be a relaxing vacation. Um, so I'll be there Thursday through Sunday um, with some of my with my agent um, and his, some of his clients, and I come back Sunday morning and probably get off the plane and get some more work in. Um, and next week my plans are to go go to Houston, um, train there for a couple of days, 
um, and spend the rest of my time in Dallas with my family before I head back to Pittsburgh next Sunday, I believe, Sunday or Monday, the following Sunday or Monday. Yeah, that beach running is no joke, especially for the resistance. So don't burn yourself out too much, man. You are allowed to have like a day off and watch for those seashells on your feet too because if you're running around yeah. in your bare feet on the sand, that's no joke. It's worse than a Lego. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um, you know, one thing I had asked you was about your Twitter handle and you are at – uh, and I had it up, and of course, it just went out for a second. So, uh, but your name is different than the handle. It's uh, Sauce God D A. Here it is, D A or underscore L O E. Um, Sauce God is that a nickname that someone gave you, or is it kind of something you gave mm-hmm. yourself? What does that mean? A little bit of both, you know. Like you know, growing up, um, this is just a term we've been using. You know, you got to have a lot of sauce. You can't, you can't be dry. You got to have. You got to have some sauce, you know, on the field, you know, when you're dressing up, going out, um, just every day, you know, you want to want to have a little sauce. You can't be dry. So uh, it just came from me having a lot of sauce on the field. And you know, my swag was just off the charts compared, compared to some guys. So I just thought everybody just started calling me sauce guy. And um, I used to always say I'm saucy or just a lot of sauce. We dripping sauce. And then, like I say, everybody just – I was like, why not call him Sauce Guy? And when I first got to Pittsburgh, that's how AB would call me. So he wouldn't call me DA. He wouldn't call me. He he wouldn't call me Demarcus. Like he was like Sauce Guy. What's good? And, and uh, and it's just been the thing ever since then. You know, me and my one of my college roommates, uh, we would just call each other Sauce Boys or Sauce Twins. Um, and that's just my brother, man. We always try to bring a sauce to the field, off the field. Uh, and it's just crazy. It just it just, just kind of blew up the way it did. That it, I would have never guessed that in a million years. And we were always asking guys if they have nicknames or if they've obtained them from certain places. So uh, now we'll know about that. Do you also do kind of like the feed me more thing? I'm always seeing like the the receivers like Sammy Coates uh, always motion with mm-hmm. his hand or Javon Hargrave, um, <laughs> Brian Shazier. Uh, that that's kind of an interesting one as well. I, it's actually pretty catchy. I could see some of the fans doing it in the stands when we're there at the games too. But uh, aside from uh, uh, all of that uh maybe you have like a hobby or something that maybe someone otherwise wouldn't know about you tell us one thing about demarcus Ayers that nobody else knows uh i got two things actually i'm a really good 2k and then uh madden player <laughs> can no one on the team beat me i want it i want a madden league and um all the guys kind of hate me now <laughs> what team do you and, play uh, with uh, I play with a number of teams. You know, when you good, you can kind of you can kind of mix and match. I just I just have to have a good defense. I don't. I, don't, I, I I'm a good offensive play caller. So you give me a good defense. You know, I can I can make any team good. You know, you kind of danced then, uh, around that <laughs> question yeah. a little bit with the good defense. I guess we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, and um, and I'm also a really good basketball player. I like to play basketball in my, in my off time. Um. Basketball was pretty much my first sport, and um, I was getting recruited for basketball before I ever even touched a football, um, before I even got recruited for football in, in high school. So um, I'm a really good point guard. Um, I kind of got an all-around game. I like to get guys involved. But I just I love playing basketball. It's good for conditioning and cardio. Um, I just have to be a lot more safe now when I'm playing. So – I enjoy. I really enjoy playing basketball and watching basketball as well. Yeah, you ever play any pickup games with uh, Le'Veon Bell? I haven't, but I, I I've seen the video of Le'Veon killing in the gym <laughs> um, uh, last week. But uh, I wish I wish Le'Veon would have came to the gym I was in last night because we went six and zero when I walked in. So <laughs> I, I get, we'll play someday. I know guys on the team like Cam Hayward and Tuit, um and Marcus Tucker and some of those guys. They they love to play basketball too. So. Just around this time, you just kind of got to be careful. Though I've been, I've been going in and kind of just getting cardio, trying to run up and down the court, um, and 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 get as much cardio and condition I can in. Um, but nothing really serious. 
Yeah. I do get buckets, though. I do get buckets. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Uh, basketball was my first love, too, and uh, something I got to play and unfortunately blew my knee out. So that's the first thing I think myself and many others think of is, you know, when you guys are on the hardwood, it's like, please, please just don't be safe out there. A lot of guys just think, hey, all you can do is football, but there's a lot more to it, and that yeah. just helps you get in shape uh, overall. It, like they have the term football shape. It, it just helps you stay in football shape in game shape because you're not no doing, doubt yeah you're just consistently doing, running yeah <laughs> no routine whatsoever but as a uh as a uh, pittsburgh steeler and as a basketball uh player as well were there any specific players that you ever looked up to when you were younger and said oh man you know what i want to be like that guy when i grow up oh heck yeah um shoot sure. lebron lebron is my favorite player of all time i know i know i got a lot of respect for mj kobe I mean, a lot of great players. It came a lot of Juwan. Um, I mean, it's just Larry Bird, Magic, all those guys, Shaquille O'Neal. I, I mean, I didn't grow up in their era, but I kind of seen the end of their careers. And um, LeBron is my favorite athlete of all time, just in terms of I, I like the way he prepared himself. Even though he's been to the championship so many times and, and lost more than he's won, but, the, you know, just to get there and be, being, you know, have a chance to win it every single – every year – and the, his his work ethic, his grind, you know, the way he makes everyone around him better, um, it's it's unique, you know. And this every every summer, um, and every off season, I always try to take away from the best athletes of the world in terms of their work work they work they think their mindset, their mentality, um, the way they make everyone around them better, what they do in their off time, their what they eat, and things like that. I, I'm a big studier, so I do things like that. And the guy that I've always enjoyed and have tremendous respect about it also kobe you know i have kobe um documentary on dvr um muse I, I i love it you know just you know i love his mentality that mama mentality is every time i'm on the field i always try to think in terms of you know i try to take away from those guys and um every time i watch the documentaries i just can think back when i'm on the field like man if you think like these guys think and put in the work like these guys put in like how can you not be great? And and it's contagious, you know. Like I say, I I watch those guys all the time. It's just not ba- about basketball for me, uh, or football all the time, or any sport. It's sometimes you have to like study guys' mentality, the way they work, um, the things that they eat, and you know, the way they carry them, the way they carry themselves, um, the people they keep around them. You know, their their company is always good, and the way they can be a professional on an every single day basis. Um, it's it's unique, and, and I'm. Um, I'm, I'm obsessed with it. Yeah, I was going to say, because being a point guard and uh, idolizing Hakeem Olajuwon, I would have never made that connection. But, I mean, yeah, what a well-rounded player he was. And, of course, I grew up with Be Like Mike. So Michael Jordan, definitely a, a huge, huge impact on many, many, many young lives growing up so demarcus yep. uh it was uh, uh, i was gonna say a pleasure plus an honor to have you on uh wish you the best of luck headed into the 2017 season hope to catch up with you at training camp as well sure well i can't uh can't wait uh, it'd be cool to meet you in person and see you guys out there and i appreciate you for having me on the show as well Ladies and gentlemen, that was Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver Demarcus Ayers. As you can tell, a very intelligent and athletic guy. The future is definitely bright for him, and we look forward to seeing him during the 2017 season. Until next time, we hope you enjoyed this interview. Be safe, be good, and we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com.